So glad you're here. Uh, my name, as Felicia said, I'm Kim Barron. I'm the owner of Mindy Graphic Design. I've been a designer. Uh, I've been on my own for this May. It will be 22 years. And I was designing for about 10 years prior to that. So I've been around a long time, <laughs> um, learning a lot of technology all the way. So uh, let's see. I, I kind of wanted to divide this talk into two parts. So one is to talk of, I, it's difficult to talk to somebody about how to create graphics for your business if they haven't already done brand, you have to do the brand work first before you can do the graphic work. Otherwise you're, you're gonna end up with a mishmash. So we're gonna talk a little bit about branding first and what it is and how what you'll understand why it's important to do a branding exercise and then we can get into the graphics uh, end of things. Mm -hmm. So these are the four, I've kind of broke this down into four parts. We'll talk about identity versus branding, how to define on your brand, brands who are, I have some examples of some brands who are doing it right, and then some DIY tools for those who wanna try it themselves. Okay, so identity versus branding. There is a difference. Um, what is a brand? Your brand is not your company name, it's not your logo, it's not your tagline, it's not your colors or your fonts. That is the visual aspect of your branding, but a brand really is what your company stands for and how people see you. So it's much more than the visual aspect of your business of, of your brand. There's a lot more that goes into it. Um, the formal definition of a brand is the set of ideas a company or product stands for in people's minds. The informal definition is your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And that's a quote from Jeff Bezos. So I can understand that in terms of brands that I'm really loyal to. There are certain products that I'll always use, recommend to other people. Um, and certain products I won't use or recommend, may, and that may only be based on what I've heard from other people. A brand is a person's gut feeling about a product, service, or company. As a business owner or a marketing person or a designer, you can't really control that process. All you can do is try to influence it. So I'm going to run us through a, a series of little quick slides that really help to define this concept of what branding is and what it isn't. So this is Joe here on the left, and that's Mary on the right. And Joe tells Mary, I am a great lover. Is that branding? No, that's marketing. If Joe calls Mary to tell her what a great lover he is, that is not branding either. That's telemarketing. <laughs> <laughs> if Barbara says to Mary, trust me, Joe is a great lover. Is that branding? <laughs> no, that's public relations. <laughs> If Joe repeats over and over to Mary what a great lover he is, that is not branding, that's advertising. <laughs> if he shows her in a visual way what brand, what, how, what a great lover he is, that's not branding, that's graphic design. So you can see where that's a part of it, but that's not the whole aspect of it. If Mary says to Joe, I understand you're a great lover, that is branding. Okay, so she's kind of gotten that impression from outside resources. From his... Persistence. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the recap is branding is not what you say it is, it is what they say it is, your brand rather. Okay. So these are a lot of the aspects that make up a brand. So it is, yes, it is your graphics. It is also your customer's experience when they meet you or uh, come into your, if you have a brick and mortar and they come into your facility. Um, it's the staff you have and the way your staff treats customers and clients. It can be how the receptionist answers your phone. Is she a pleasant person? Is she somebody that I'm not going to want to talk to again? He or she. It's your product. It is your logo. Your messaging, written communications, verbal communications. It's your packaging, your signage, your website, and the decor of your office space or business. So all those things together kind of are what branding is incorporating. So how do you begin to define your brand? Well, as a graphic designer, I work with a lot of people who are starting right from the beginning. They are, it's a, maybe it's a small company um, that has zero idea of how to go about this. But what a graphic designer can do is help you define who you are, who you are, what your values are as a business, what, what are the beliefs that define your company, what is your brand's personality? Um, I go through a questionnaire when I'm working with a client on a branding project. And a lot of times when I'll, I like to ask questions like, if your company was a famous person, who would it be? Like, is it 
Brad Pitt? Is it Fred Rogers? Those are kind of evocative questions that help me understand what that person is thinking about. And, and uh, another one would be, if your company was a car, what kind of car would it be? Is it a Maserati? Is it a Prius? Um, or if it was a famous well-known city, like is it Madrid, Spain or Milan, Italy? Those kind of questions um, can help me understand what you're envisioning as your brand, brand's personality. And also um, the graphic designer can help you understand your unique positioning. Well, you, it's sort of a, a team effort. Um, and as a graphic designer, I also look at a, a person or a company's competitors to see what makes this person different from that person or this business different from that business. So I'm gonna run through a little exercise. This would be sort of a DIY exercise. When I work with a client, I go through, we, there's a lot of talking that goes on before I ever begin the design work. So this is an example of, of a way to do it. There's a lot of ways to do it. Every designer and um, ad agency has their own way. And some of them just kind of have branded actually their way of doing things. But this is just an example. So let's say your business was um, a beautiful log cabin spa in the mountains of Montana or Vermont. Um, there are five buckets here. So they're numbered one through five. One is culture, one is customer, one is voice, one is benefit, and one is value. So it would be important in this exercise to sit down and think about those five aspects of your business. So what is your what is the company culture that you envision? So in this example for the with the resort spa in the woods, this cus this client might say, okay, we are we want the culture to be familial, hospitable, caring, friendly, and welcoming. And then what is your, what is the vision you have of your customer? So we want our customers to be friendly, fun, grounded, adventurous, and social. What's the voice that your company is speaking with? How do you put yourself out there and speak and written communicate communication materials, your marketing materials, your the way you talk when you're doing um, a podcast, that kind of thing. We want to sound charming, old fashioned, personable, professional, and caring. And what's the benefit I receive if I come to your spa? You're gonna feel recharged, connected, accomplished. You're gonna be at ease and relaxed. And what is the value of your services or your product if it were a company with a product? So in this case, exclusive, empowered, inclusive, worry-free and centered. So this is like the big picture view. This would be sitting down and just coming up with adjectives that describe your company. I actually have a sheet, uh, an eight and a half by 11 sheet, which has like a hundred and some words like this that I'll give to a client and say, let's talk about what on here fits you or let's choose you know, a dozen examples of words that help you describe your company. So then taking that bigger list, I, it, you can cull it down into words that are important, words that really feel like they hit, hit the mark. Um, from a designer's perspective, I'm going to choose words that can lend themselves to visual or graphic elements or a, a certain style. So this is bringing it down from more words down to about 10 words. And then from there, really honing it down into six words, which then distill down into two basic words. So all inclusive, spacious, and upscale are, are can be summed up by saying refined, casual, charming, and old school are summed up, can be summed up by the word rustic. So this, the bottom line is having taken all that information and bringing it down into refined and rustic is how this company might wanna brand themselves. That then refined and rustic can be the through line that runs through everything that is done for that company, through all of their materials, through all of their visuals, if they had a store, um, that might be the way the store is decorated. You can kind of see where that gives a common, like a golden thread that runs through everything. And from a design perspective, it's it. it I, that's where I start to get excited because I start pick, now I'm designing in my head. Okay, I got an idea of where this can go. So I thought we could take a look at some brands who are doing it really well, which it, it was really hard to like pick a few because there's a ton of them. So I, this is Oatly. It's a brand of oat milk. It's an alternative to milk, to dairy. Um, I happen to, this is a product I love. I just, I switched over to oat milk like a year ago and now I'm like, uh, um, and, and I'm addicted to it. <laughs> um, they are a prominent brand. They are definitely leading the charge. 
what I love, these are, this is a kind of overview of their um, brand elements, right? So um, some of the graphics that they use, the, their logo, their colors, their fonts, some of the photography and some of their product shots. It, when I picture, it's, it's such an odd, to me at first glance, it's such an odd concept for an oat milk. Like who would have thought, if somebody came to me and said, I'm gonna create this, this oat milk product, I would be thinking like oats are like mellow and soft and calm, you know, they're cozy. It's a food you eat on a cold day. I would probably have leaned really more towards like warm, you know, soft things, I guess. And then here they are with this bold, thick lines and daring kind of graphics and stuff. So I think it really, they, it helps them obviously stand out from the crowd and it really hits the mark. What's very interesting is that their color palette is very soft and pastel. So they did touch on that aspect of it, but they balanced it with these bold, heavy graphics. So very innovative, very interesting, really gives them a lot of all of this gives them a lot of tools to work with also, which is, you'll see that in the coming slides too, is creating a brand and creating the graphics for a brand, the, the more well done it is, the more tools it gives you for down the road for how to expand on that and how to, how am I going to create materials that look fresh, that don't always look exactly the same. So somebody isn't, is aware that your change, your message can change but they all look similar. They all look like they belong to your company. So this is Pitney Bowes. They are a client of mine. Their headquarters is located here in Stanford, but they're an international company. I've been working with Pitney Bowes for um, probably 15 years or more. And, and when I started, they were, it was a time where they were kind of having to decide, I think, who they were, who they were going to become because their business, I don't want to say it was becoming obsolete, but they're, business really tied Transition into- Transition yeah, greatly. Good word, yeah. yeah. Um, they were, you know, in the physical mail, they had sorting machines and technology and stuff that had to do with physical mail. And then the whole world was turning digital and less people were sending mail, actual, actual mail. So they had to figure out how to become like a tech technology player in this big field. They brought in a branding, a really well-known branding company, and I'm sure it costs a lot of money, um, but they did a phenomenal job and it's, so good that it's been year, it's probably been close to 10 years, maybe now eight or nine years. It's still, I still, as a graphic designer, using the tools of their brand, using their fonts, their colors, and the graphics, I can still create materials that look new all the time. They have such a wonderful like palette of materials here. Um, and the this the new logo, the, the lines that radiate out are a nod to their original logo which was had a series of lines. It was more like a plus sign. Um, and um, the, uh, the color palette is lovely. It's bright. And they also have, I don't know if I can, if you're seeing my pointer when I point to it, but yeah. um, these gradations they have this, they have, they created three sets of these gradations. So this one here is like a purple to an orange. There's a light blue that goes into um, a purple. And then there's another one that's like a green. I don't know, it's down, it's similar to this one down here. It's a cyan and it fades into a green. Those are their three gradients and you can do with them kind of whatever you want. So it's, it can be really fun. And down here at the bottom, they created a custom illustration that helps the customer, um, I'll read it, visualize the ecosystem of physical and digital commerce as a way to build customer understanding. So this rebranding really turned them around and kind of brought them from being a brand that was like almost of the past um, to a kind of dynamic future focused um, brand with a very clear, uh, it kind of clearly shows their value. So really well done. Um, Peloton, <laughs> all of us who have been through the pandemic have uh, become aware of Peloton if you weren't before. Um, they are placing themselves um, to be known as the safe alternative to the gym, right? That was an important thing at the time, still is, and an on-demand fitness studio. Um, their colors are bold, obviously red, black, and then some grays, very bold and uh, recognizable. And their logo is a, it's a letter P for Peloton, but it's also resembles a, a spin bike. Um, they have continued to expand their offerings. So now it's not just you on the bike. You can do yoga. You can do um, strength training and other things off of the bike using the 
the screen and the uh, teachers. I don't do it, so I'm not exactly sure how it works. Um, but they're very good with their consistent use of their logo, the colors um, in their in their um, television advertising. They use a lot of upbeat music and um, the the idea of the instructors. They have I've, in the commercials usually the person's on the bike or next to the bike doing their exercise and the instructor is there. So it kind of it makes me it definitely makes me want to buy one. Not that I have. But, um, and then in their social media they use user generated photos. So that kind of helps. Um, demonstrate their mission of using technology to connect the world through fitness. So they also super, super well done brand. And then I have one more. The last one is Bumble. Um, I had to load this on my phone so that I could grab some of the screen captures and now I have to remove it so my husband doesn't take a look at my phone and wonder why I'm on a dating app. Um, so <laughs> Bumble was the first app where females were empowered to make the first move. But what I love about their graphics and their, their style here is that it doesn't, it's not specifically female focused. Um, it's the, the, obviously the black and the yellow is a nod towards bees and bumble, the word bumble. Um, but it also is such a bright, colorful, like joyful palette that um, it evokes emotions like optimism, imagination, and excitement. And great, great qualities in an app, also great qualities in a date. Um, and then down here at the um, bottom, this is just a capture from their Instagram. So you can see how they're consistently using their colors. Once in a while, they'll throw in something like there's a woman here in a, jack a bright red jacket. So consistency in colors and branding and every once in a while throwing in something that will really make somebody stop and pay attention. So just to summarize all of that, these companies show, I'm gonna read this because I will not remember it on my own. These companies show a consistent implementation of a strong visual identity that highlights each one's values and goals. From logo design to strategic use of color, these brands are easily recognized in their markets. And with good planning for your visual brand strategy and sticking to it consistently, your brand can stand out and cultivate a thriving community. And then this is the last slide. I, I put together a list of some DIY tools for anyone who would like to kind of go this on their own. I obviously I'm always going to recommend you hire a designer. There's a lot of work. Um, there's a lot to be said for um, having been through this and done it before. And I should mention, I didn't say this earlier. I work, I'll work with a client one-on-one -on -one and do a, you know, I can do a branding with a client. Uh, one on one. I also have a marketing person that I bring in a lot of times who does a really deep dive. Sometimes the comp it's a bigger company or it's a company. I I'm doing a project right now that's a, a major rebrand. And in a case like that, I bring in somebody who really knows their stuff and really dives deep into the quantitative and qualitative information and really doing, you know, um, comparison, comparing um, competitors and um, in the end, in a situation like that, in the end, we come come back to the client with a document that's like 75 page long brand platform. And then from that, that sort of phase one and then phase two is where you activate all the things you're recommending. So this is like, this is what we're recommending. This is what we see. Um, and it does include a logo design and your font choices and your colors and some of the basics. And then from that point, the brand gets activated so the actual marketing materials get created so uh, having said that if you wanted to try anything on your own canva.com most everybody has heard of that by now it's it's fairly simple to use pretty intuitive i found it if you're used to using software it's pretty intuitive they have a lot of resources for creating your social media and and basically anything i think you can create print materials from there and everything creativemarket.com and invado.com are um, stock art. So if you need graphics and illustrations and that kind of thing, um, probably all kinds of stuff, fonts as well, I'm sure. Um, what I like about those two is they offer them in packages. So you can, you can buy a package that contains a lot of different elements that you can use and kind of tie them together. You know, you're not just buying a single piece of stock art one at a time. Um, Pexels.com and Unsplash.com offer free photography, and it is really good photography, I have to say. Um, 
it's love. Some of it is beautiful. It's really well done professional photography. Um, uh, the downside of that is that you really can't, you can download an image that a photographer has posted, but if you needed a series of images that look similar, like you needed a series of images with the same person in them doing different things, you wouldn't find it there. That you would have to really go for to a, a paid site. But they have some really beautiful stuff. I was sh shocked when I found out about them. Um, the New York Public Library is actually a really great resource too. Uh, they have scanned in, I don't know how they have all these resources as a library, but, but all these things that they have, they have scanned them in, they're digital now, and you can go on this website and download. Um, so an example is I'm working on a branding project with a client that um, I needed some idea of uh, imagery for like in uh, vintage tapestries and vintage wallpaper. And I went on there and they had some some beautiful things. So it's just like, what a great resource. And is it free or do you have to buy wow. it? You know, to, I, you, I believe that you can download them for free if you just need the small digital file. I had to look at into um, if I needed a really big high resolution file for printing and that, but I think it was like $50 or something. You know, it was, it's sh shockingly lovely resource. And then the last one is creativecommons.org, and that's um, artists, any artist can upload materials that they want to be available for public use in the public domain, and then they, I be, I'm not sure of the exact rules around it, but they set the standards for the usage of it, so they, if, you want, if they want to put stuff out there for anyone to use for free, they can say that, they can say, I want you to give me credit for it when you use it, and that kind of thing. So that's that's everything. I hope um, I covered some information that you guys were interested in hearing. That's me. And if you have any questions, we can go over it. Um, if there's anything I didn't touch on that you want to know more about, feel free. I do Felicia left the room, and I do not know how to operate this equipment. So. I was going to ask. Speaking of Felicia, like I know you designed everything for Haven. I'm just curious with. What are the two words that you guys came down to to get that thread that runs across behavior? That's a great question. I want to double all of that question. Yes. <laughs> well, okay. Well, question. <laughs> so Felicia and I have known each other for a long, long time. And we used to work to get like, she hired me as a designer at the marketing agency she owned. So the truth of the matter is we did not go through this exact exercise. Oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, because she, and 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 that's because she knows what she's doing, and she's a super smart marketing person, and she, and we had been known each other for a long time, so it was a sort of different scenario. Um, but she, and you knew her vision when she was opening. Hey, Jeff, she really so. has a good way. You know, I will, and this to this day, I will present her with something, and she'll be like, "Nope, not that." This, and then I'll just turn the corner and do. You know, it's a very easy communication we have, and. So she, I knew what she wanted to do. She had a pretty good idea of what she wanted things to look like. So it, it was an unusual scenario. Yeah. I'm just trying to see the logo on the door. Oh, so it's just say networking community. Uh, Co-working co -working community. community. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Any other questions? I, I didn't know all the, I just checked canva.com. I regularly use it just mm -hmm. because there's a color wheel. You, you, mm -hmm. at least it happens with me too often that I pick a color and I, I want colors that will go with this. How do I come up with that? Yeah. If I come up with that, look, 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 <laughs> so canva.com, just generally pick a color and then pick everything else that you want around. It, it. generates it for you. Generates. Yep. But I didn't know the other side of Canva that has so much of much. I just looked at it. Yeah, it's, it's really a great resource too. No question. Do you incorporate market research in your processes, or is that just? I think when you mentioned you bring in, like, if it's a bigger rebrand, you'll bring in um, a marketing yeah, person, and she would and do that, that would outsource the research. Yeah, she would yeah. do it herself. Or oh well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. She's okay. the, the woman I work with is stupendous, and and what I really love about her is that she um, has a way of explaining things to clients where you don't get overwhelmed. I can see that they're like she's in charge and she knows what she's doing and she's also going to lead me through this in a way that doesn't freak me out so mm -hmm. yeah i think we're done <laughs> and it's melissa just a question so would you recommend someone starting a business of um you know a one person shop do their own graphics if they 
you know, how would you how would you advise someone? Um, it's a yes and no. It sort of it depends on the person. It can be a lot. I see what I see with social media, even as definitely for myself, it's overwhelming when you have a job yeah. to do. I don't. I have to say, I'm the worst at social media. I don't really don't do it. I unfortunately, I, fortunately, I haven't had my business has really been word of mouth, and it's been 22 years that that I've been busy. I don't know how you could do it all. I don't know how you could launch a business and do all of it. Um, so, you know, if you if you're the type of person who can and you have a creative sensibility, but it ah yeah yeah. <laughs> I don't recommend it. And you know, you can't, it can, be, it can be done affordably, right? You can find, if you really are on a tight budget, find a student at a college who's looking to build their portfolio. You know, some, you can ask the professors for somebody that they recommend as, a, as, a, as somebody who shows a lot of talent, that kind of thing. So. Someone mentioned Etsy that they have like design packages or something. I'm not, I haven't looked at them, but um, you know, no, they're kind know. of, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I fiber. Right? You know what? I, I, yeah. I don't recommend. Yeah. I did. I was doing some work for somebody and she actually came to me because she had a, she ended up with a logo that this person designed and, and it was this beautiful, tr very intricate tree. But what happened is she, her product was jewelry. So she needed a logo that was going to be on a box that was, you know, this mm -hmm. size. And this logo absolutely did not, once it got small, it lost all of the detail and she had a lot of problems. She wanted to do it in a gold foil stamp and they couldn't do it at that tiny, it was problematic. So you really need to be sure you're hiring somebody who has a sense of uh, this thing's gotta be as big as a, a truck and as tiny as a jewelry box and understand all the printing parameters. And so, I mean, I. And I've also seen people who have used those kind of companies to design a logo that then what they've seen elsewhere on the internet. So it may not be exclusive to you. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is there any more questions online?